Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Slauson and I will be starting the mid-unit review video answer key. This first review is just going to be on the first page, so the front and the back. So um, what's going to happen similar to your quiz is you are given one form and your job is to find the other form. So let's start with number one, you are given vertex form. And the first thing I'm going to do is put it into standard form. And just to let you know that the method I will be using is going to be the neighbors. And I'm just going to use the space that's here to work with. So what I need to do is remember that x minus 1 squared means that there's two of those. And I will start with my neighbors meeting right here. So I'm going to have x squared go meet everybody. And then I'm going to have negative 1 go meet everybody. And when I combine my like terms, I end up with this. And then I can just drop that negative 4 down, combine my like terms, and then I end up with x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now remember, if I go too fast, you can always pause and rewind the video. So now that I have standard form, I am able to go to intercept form, but we will just call it factored form. So that means um, I will need to factor. The first thing I'm going to do is look for a GCF, which I do not see here. And because there's three terms, I'm going to make my x. So I need factors of negative 3x squared. I've just multiplied these. That will give me a negative 2x. And the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. And I will be making the 3x negative. So when I'm ready to go to intercept form, which again is just factored form, uh, these neighbors will have to meet to make uh, this x squared right here. And an x and an x is all I need. So as my neighbors start to meet, I do have x squared. When these neighbors meet, I will be getting these side numbers. And since I'm starting with x and x in my parentheses, it really doesn't matter which one I choose. And one of them will give me a 1x, and the other neighbors meeting will give me a negative 3x. So following this loop, x times what makes 1x, and that would be a positive 1. And then x times what will make my negative 3x, and that is a negative 3. So when those neighbors meet, I get, again, I get this 1x. Whoops, not the color I wanted to use. I get this 1x, and I get this negative 3x. And when I combine those like terms, I get back to this negative 2x. And then if you just want to see the last neighbors meeting right here, I would get the negative 3 that starts here. And so again, to do that, I just factored. And I always remember, want to check for a GCF before I start any factoring. All right, next problem. This time I'm in standard form. So since we just did factoring, let's go ahead and do that again. So the first thing I'm going to look when I go from standard form to intercept form, and again, it's just factored form, is I'm going to factor and I'm going to look for a GCF, which I don't see there. So I can go straight into my X. Um, let's put it here. So I need factors multiplying those of negative 20 x squared that make 8x. And so that is going to be a 10x and a 2x with the 2x being negative. So when I go for this one, I actually have a couple of options as to what the neighbors will meet to make um, this 4x squared right here. And so one option is 2x and 2x, those neighbors can meet, or a 4x and an x. The thing is, when I have the other neighbors meet on these loops, I need to remember that i got to get a 10x and a negative 2x. And this 4x cannot multiply with anything to make either one of these. So I will be erasing now my 4x and my x because it's just not going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and figure this out. So we already know that 2x, whoops, let me fix that. We already know that a 2x and a 2x make this 4x squared. And now these are both the same, so it really doesn't matter which I start with. One of those could make the 10x, and the other could make the negative 2x. So if I just follow my loops, uh, 2x times what makes that 10x, and that is a positive 5. 
and that means 2x can follow this loop to make the negative 2x, and that would be with a negative 1. So when the black loops meet, I get a 10x and the negative 2x, which gives me this 8x right there. And then if I just want to double check my last neighbor's meaning, a negative 1 and a 5 give me that negative 5x. So again, I just factor. Um, let's see. Now when I go from standard form to vertex form, and I'll be using the space in the vertex form box, uh, that is completing the square. So this is where when I take my 4x squared, which I'm going to write up here, plus 8x minus 5, I will be separating out my x terms. And when I do that, I will be factoring the 4 out of the stuff that's highlighted. So I'll take the 4 out, which leaves me with x squared plus 2x. Here's my box, my square, and then I'll subtract 5, and then I'll have to subtract my box. So if you remember, we're going to take this 2. We always cut that number in half. And then we always square that number. 1 times 1 is 1. And I put the 1 here. And then I just don't want to forget my bunny hop. And when I do that, 4 times 1 gives me 4. So when I go for my answers, the number in front of my parentheses will be this 4. The number behind my parentheses will come from a negative 4. I'm sorry, a negative 5 take away 4, which is a negative 9. And then I always will have an x. And then whatever's in front of this squared is exactly what will go in front of that squared. And I have a positive 1. All right, last one on this page. This time I start with intercept form or factored form. So to get to standard form, I will just have the neighbors meet. I always prefer to meet neighbors that are similar, so this is where I'm going to start with my parentheses. So I'm going to get an x squared and a 7x, and then I'm going to get a negative 3x, which I'll stack with my like term, and then I remember to multiply my last neighbors to get negative 21, and when I add those up, this is what I end up with. So I'll put that in my standard form. Now I'm going to go to vertex form, and again, that's just completing the square. So when I go over here for this x squared plus 4x minus 1, and I separate out these x's, I have to take something out. So I remember that there's a 1 there, and I will take that 1 out, which actually doesn't change anything, but we want it for the bunny hop. Then I add my box, and I subtract my box. So I'm going to take the 4. I'm going to, again, cut it in half, just like I did in the box before, which is 2. Then I'm going to square that 2 to get 4. That 4 will go here. And then I can do a little bunny hop 1 times 4 to fill in my other box, which is a 4. And now in front of my parentheses will be, let's see, this one. Behind my parentheses will go a negative 1, and taking away 4 gives me a negative 5. And then with an x there, again, just remember that is what's ever in front of this squared will go here, and that is a positive 2. All right, let's go to the back. So this is bringing in some chapter 1 with domain and range and increasing. So the first thing I want to note is what are the points I should use. This cubed tells me I should use these points. And I get those points from my blue toolkit page. And just to note the jobs, I only have one job. Everything is to move right for. So that means I actually don't need to change my y values. I only need the stretch or compress to change the y values. So if you remember, I always want you to start with your 0, 0. Get those moved first. So I'm going to move 0, 0, right 4. So you can see that green dot. And then I'm going to think of everything in the x column as directions that from this green dot that I just placed at um, right 4, I'm going to move left or right, and then I'm going to move up or down. Okay, so if I go, again, starting at this green dot, which is now turning into blue, I'm going to go left 2, 
and down eight. And I'm gonna go left one and down one, again, all from that blue dot, which I'm gonna turn into an X. And then from that X, I will go right one, up one. And then from that X, I'll go right two, up eight. And I got enough points. Let's go ahead and graph this thing. All right, um, for this part on the right, this arrow is on the left, negative infinity. The arrow on the right is infinity. As far as what the Y is doing, this one's going down and this one's going up. And then I need where it hits the X axis, which is, what was that again? That was just four, zero. So my domain is my smallest X to my biggest X. My range is my smallest Y. And just remind you, um, X, this radio dial and this radio dial, okay? Um, my range is going to be my smallest y and my biggest y, so smallest y and biggest y. So I'll have another negative infinity, an infinity. Um, where is it increasing? Well, as it turns out, when I look at my graph from left to right, the whole thing's increasing. So using the x values from negative infinity to infinity, And my x-intercept is right where that blue dot x is, and it is at 4, 0. All right, next one. Um, this time I'm going to rearrange it so it looks like this. And so because of the square, these are the points I'm going to use. And the negative tells me that I'll have a flip and the four tells me I'll go up four. So because I do have something, a stretch, a compress, a flip, all of these y values are gonna be multiplied by that negative one. So all of these y values just turn to negative, and then maybe from there you just wanna cross off your old ones. And so I will, again, start with zero, zero, and I'm gonna just move it up four. From there, I'm going to think of my x and new y values as directions from this orange x marks the spot. And starting with my negative 2, negative 4, I'm going to go left 2, down 4. I'm also going to go left 1, down 1, again from that orange x. I'm going to go right 1, down 1 from the orange x. I'm going to go right 2, down four from the orange X, and then just remember when I connect it, we'll have this. Uh, as far as those important points, arrows on the left are negative infinity, on the right are infinity, they're both going down. Uh, let's see, we have X intercepts of negative two and two zero, and then we have a max up here at zero four. So our domain, again, if we are looking at the radio dials, I go from negative infinity to infinity. As far as the range goes, and my radio dials go a different way, I go from negative infinity to four. Um, where is it positive? So again, positive, where the y values are positive is gonna be this little bit of a stretch right here from negative two to two. And what is the vertex? Well, the vertex is zero, four. That's that turning point. All right, two more. Um, now, I'm not sure if my video has to forcefully cut out on me at 15 minutes. So if it does, I'll just pick up on a second part two. All right, so um, again, I note the cubed tells me I'll use these points. And I have a compress, because of that one half, left to down three. So because I have the compress, I'm gonna take all the Y values and cut them in half. And then I'll just cross out the old one. So I just took, our, took everything, cut them in half. And again, I'm gonna start with zero, zero, and that is gonna, Tell me from zero, zero, I will move left two and down three. 
And then from there, I will follow directions from this blue X marks the spot. Okay, so starting with this point, I will be moving left two, down four. From this point, I'll go left one and down a half. From this point, I'll go right one up a half, and I'm always starting that blue dot or X. And then from the blue dot or X, I'll go right two and up four. And then I've got my shape right here. All right, as far as domain and range goes, again, domain, oops, let's mark these important points first. So we've got negative infinity, negative infinity, this one's infinity, infinity, and yeah, I can't quite tell where it's crossing the x-axis, so I won't write that one. But anyway, my domain is my radio dials, and the smallest x is negative infinity, and my biggest x is infinity. Uh, when I do my range radio dials, I go from negative infinity to infinity. Where is it increasing? Well, just like on the first graph, it's always increasing. And so I'll just write down the x value. So it starts at negative infinity and goes to infinity. And then what's the y-intercept? That is actually right here. I'm going to turn it black. It is 0, 1. And our last graph. So because of the squared, I'll be using these points. Uh, we will have a stretch. We will go right three and we will go down seven. So because of the stretch, I'm going to take all these y values and I'm going to double them. And then I'm going to cross out their old ones. And then just like before, I'm going to start with zero, zero. And I will move that right three down seven. And again, we'll kind of do an X marks the spot. So from here, that X green marking, I'm going to go left two, up eight. And then I'll go left one, up two. And then I'll go right one, up two. And then I'll just go right two, up eight. And then I get that U shape. So again, just marking those important points so I can do the stuff on the left. Negative infinity on the left for x, it's going up. Infinity on the right for x, and it's going up. Um, let's see, I can't quite tell where it is hitting the x-axis, so I'm not going to mark that, but I got a uh, 3, negative 7. So my domain, smallest x, biggest x. So I will do negative infinity to infinity. My range is going to be smallest y to biggest y. So for this, I'll do negative 7 to infinity. Where is it decreasing? Uh, decreasing, when I go left to right, is this stretch going in pink. So the x value that starts it is negative infinity. The x value that ends it is 3. And the minimum value. So the minimum value is the negative 7. Where did it occur? where x equals 3. And that is your graph and such for the first page.